Multiplying monomials by polynomials. I'd like to start with an example that demonstrates why this works. So imagine Jimmy, Dave, and Harmon have an argument about the space-time continuum. Isn't this what everybody does on their Friday nights? Harmon is so convinced he is correct that he's willing to bet the other two for the money in his pocket. He has two toonies and three quarters in his pocket. If he wins, the other two must each give him the same amount. Turns out he's right. Write an expression for the value of the coins in Harmon's pocket. Well, first of all, we'd have to identify or use variables to represent what we're talking about. What are our two, uh, two values? They are toonies and quarters. So what we're gonna do is let the value of toonies equal t and the value of quarters equal q. So now a toonie is worth $2 and a quarter is worth 25 cents. Write an expression for the coins in Harmon's pocket. Well, first of all, he has two toonies, so the value would be two times t. And he has three quarters, so the value would be three times q. Next, write a non-simplified expression for the total Harmon has after he wins the bet. Well, here's the thing. He starts out with two toonies and three quarters. So what has he got in his pocket afterwards? Well, he's gonna have three times as much. So what does he have? He's gonna have six toonies and three quarters. This is the distributive law where we take the term in front and we multiply it by each term inside the bracket. This allows us to get rid of the bracket. And again, we multiply or distribute a term across the terms in the next bracket. All right, so let's demonstrate this using visuals. There are two visuals we can use. The first one is algetiles. With algetiles, what we're going to do is draw two lines at 90 degrees to each other. Inside the lines is going to be the product. On the outside edges is going to be our factors or the polynomials that we are multiplying. So first of all, we have 3x. I know an x is represented by a bar. So on one side, I'm going to draw three bars with the x side facing the line. On the other side, I've got 2x minus 1. So I'm going to draw two x's with the x side facing the line. But I've also got the minus 1. So I'm going to draw one small non-shaded box. Now, the idea is to find the area of the shape inside the lines. So I've on one side I've got x, on the other side I've got x, so if I put those together and multiply them, I would get an x squared. Again, x times x is x squared, x times x is x squared. Now I've done the first line, but I've also got another x down below. I've got to keep going until I've used up all sides. x times x, x squared, x times x, x squared, x times x, x squared. I've now done all of the x's, but I have not done the negative one at the bottom. So negative one times x is negative x. Negative one times one, negative x, and negative x. So what is my product? It is six x squared minus three x's. These are not like terms. The shapes are not the same. Therefore, that is my final answer. We can also do this using something called the area model. So here's what I've done. I've taken a box and on one side, I have not divided it because 3x is a monomial. On the other side, I've divided it into two parts because my other factor is a binomial. So on one part, I'm gonna put 2x. On the other part, I'm gonna put negative one. The reason this is called an area model is because we're gonna find the area of each shape. So for the left shape, I'm gonna multiply 3x times 2x, giving me 6x squared. 
on the right side, I'm going to multiply 3x times negative 1, giving me negative 3x. Now, these are the areas of each shape. When we combine them, we just write out the, the entire thing because they are not like terms, therefore we cannot combine them. And that would be my final answer. Now, although helpful, it's not really convenient to do this on a regular basis. So, we can do this using algebra. So how do we do this using algebra? Well, remember, we took the three and we multiplied by each term inside the bracket. This allows us to get rid of the bracket. Here, I'm going to take the 4m and multiply it by each term inside the bracket. 4 times 2m is and 4m times 3. Now, I'm going to multiply these out. 4m times 2m gives me 8m squared. 4m times 3 gives me 12m. Notice these aren't like terms, so that is my final answer. Why don't you try 2, 3, 4, and 5, and I will do it in a minute. So stop the recording now. Okay, so let's do number 2. 6m times 5m, 6 times 5 is 30, m times m is m squared. 6m times negative 4, 6 times negative 4 is negative 24, and there's an m left. So my answer is 30m squared minus 24m. Final answer. Number 3, again, I've thrown in a negative first term. This does make it a little more complicated, but still follow the same pattern. Negative 2m times negative 4m, negative times negative is a positive 8m squared. Negative 2 times negative 5 is going to be 10, but it's negative 2m times negative 5 is going to be positive 10m. Again, non-like terms. That's my final answer. Number 4. Notice that we have three terms here. This makes it a little bit more difficult, but we still follow exactly the same pattern. We're going to take 3m and multiply it by each term inside the bracket. So 3m times 4m, 12m squared. 3m times negative 5k. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, but what do we do with m and k? Well, they are not the same variable, so all we can do is write them side by side because this means negative 15 multiplied by m multiplied by k. And finally, 3m times 7 is positive 21m. And that's my final answer. Number 5. Number 5 deals with higher value exponents. Now, what you haven't learned yet, or may not have learned yet, is that when we multiply bases the same bases with exponents, we add the exponents. So when I go 5m squared times 3m cubed, 5 times 3 is 15, m squared times m cubed, we add the exponents, which is going to give us 15m to the fifth. I'm now going to multiply the second one. 5m squared times negative m. Well, 5 times the number in front of the m is really negative 1. So 5 times negative 1 is negative 5 m times m, m squared times m, even though it doesn't state it, there is an exponent on, on the m inside the bracket. It is a 1. So when we add them, we're going to get 5m cubed. These are not like terms, so that's my final answer. All right. Word problem. Johnny has an area rug. The rug is three feet longer than it is white. Johnny wants to put a new rug that is twice as long and twice as wide. So let's start by drawing a picture. First, there is my small rug. My big rug is twice as large on either side. So what do we know about the small rug? Well, here's what we know. We know that we've got a width. And what do we know about the other side? We know that it's three feet longer than the width, or w plus 3. Now, example 2. Write an expression for the new width and new length. Well, 
how do we know about the new width? Well, if the original width was W and the new width is twice as big, then the new width is going to be 2W. But what about the length? Well, my original length was W plus 3. My new length is going to be twice as big, or 2, multiplied by the width plus 3, or 2W plus 6. Part 3. Find the area of the new rug. Well, what shape is the new rug? It is a rectangle. So what's the formula for finding the area of a rectangle? It is width times length. What's my width? Well, my new width is 2w. My new length is 2w plus 6. So notice, in order for me to simplify this, I am going to have to get rid of the bracket. How do I get rid of the bracket? By using the distributive law. So 2w times 2w gives me 4w squared. 2w multiplied by 6 gives me plus 12w. Now, I was told that the units were feet, so I'm going to have to put feet there, but because it's area, meaning I'm multiplying width times length, it's going to be feet squared. And that's my final answer.